people, including Big John Fury, the fighting man, when you've got him in the corner, shouting and screaming at you, whilst you've got two other people giving you advice, that means you're listening to absolutely nobody. I thought that was terrible. In a recent analysis, Carl Frock shed light on why Tyson Fury lost to Alexander Usyk, citing John Fury's unwarranted interference in the Gypsy King's corner during a bout as a surprising factor. However, John Fury didn't take the criticism lightly, and he swiftly fired back at Frock. A quick response to Belly and Frock. Belly and Frock, what can I say about them two, them guys? Come and meet me face to face. I'll eat Frotch alive and I'll eat Bellew alive. And by the way, Bellew got his ass handed to Frock, in turn, didn't shy away from John Fury's threats. Instead, he sent a firm warning about the repercussions of challenging him. Come anywhere near me, nowhere in the vicinity within my jab, or you will be getting ironed out. You'll be unconscious. You'll be snoring before you hit the floor. Big John Fury. Frock's take on the situation is clear. He sees John Fury as more of a problem than a solution for Tyson Fury's team. There's speculation that Tyson may act on this advice, considering removing his father from his coaching staff after recent controversies, particularly the incident in Saudi Arabia. Frock's analysis suggests that John Fury's interference during fights might have contributed to Tyson's recent defeat. This move by Tyson signifies his intent to address their damaged reputation and refocus on upcoming matches especially the crucial rematch with Alexander Usyk, scheduled for October. Stick around as we delve deeper into Frock's insights on this development. Frock didn't hold back in acknowledging Usyk's well-deserved victory, praising his technical finesse and strategic brilliance. He highlighted Usyk's agile movement and sharp jabs that kept Fury on the defensive, particularly in the fight's early stages. Frock also pointed out Usyk's aggressive dominance in the later rounds, particularly in round 9, as a key factor in securing the win. While he applauded both fighters for their determination and skill, Frock didn't shy away from criticizing Fury's showboating, suggesting it may have cost him crucial moments in the match. Frock also noticed a shift in Fury's demeanor leading up to the fight, noting his uncharacteristic nervousness and diminished confidence. In regard to John Fury, Frock voiced his skepticism regarding the elder Fury's claims about Tyson's invincibility. He argued that Usyk's victory served as a humbling reminder that no fighter is unbeatable, contrary to John Fury's assertions. Frock stressed that Tyson now faces a significant challenge in reclaiming his top position in the heavyweight division, especially if a rematch with Usyk is on the horizon. 37 years old, so by the time they fight again, he's getting even closer to 40. So what I'm saying is anything can happen in a rematch, but... Does Tyson Fury believe that he can go back into Frock delved into the prospect of a rematch between Fury and Usyk, questioning whether Fury possesses the confidence and necessary adjustments to prevail in a second encounter. He highlighted Tyson's apparent nervousness and lack of confidence, suggesting that these factors could persist and impact his performance in the rematch. Frock also addressed Anthony Joshua's previous losses to Usyk, arguing that Joshua's reputation shouldn't be tarnished due to these defeats. Instead, he emphasized Usyk's exceptional skill level as a significant factor and advocated for viewing Joshua's performances within that context. Another expert who raised concerns about Fury's performance is Colin Hart. Tyson, in that ninth round, no other person has ever done, no other fighter has ever done that to Tyson. And you know what? Two or three years ago, Usyk wouldn't have been able to do that to Tyson. In an interview, Hart offered his unique perspective admitting he wasn't caught off guard by the outcome as he had foreseen Usyk's victory on points prior to the bout. He emphasized that despite the closely contested nature of the fight, Usyk rightfully earned the win. Hart observed a noticeable decline in Fury's performance, particularly evident in the later rounds, citing the ninth round where Fury barely weathered Usyk's relentless assault, prompting debate among fans about whether the fight should have been stopped. However, Hart disagreed, defending the referee's decision to administer a mandatory eight-count given Fury's overall performance. Hart attributed Fury's decline to various factors, including his physically taxing trilogy with Deontay Welder and his inconsistent lifestyle marked by significant weight fluctuations. He suggested that these factors, along with Fury's advancing age, have begun to affect his fighting prowess. Regarding the potential rematch between Fury and Usyk, Hart voiced skepticism about Fury's ability to reverse the outcome. Hart observed a shift in Fury's confidence and physical condition, 
casting doubt on his ability to adapt and defeat Yusik in a potential rematch. Reflecting on the toll the fight exacted on both fighters, he acknowledged Fury's resilience while recognizing Yusik's ability to withstand damage and swiftly recover. Hart praised both fighters as exemplary of their generation, underscoring the bout's quality and excitement. He anticipated that a rematch would captivate audiences and become a major event, given the fighter's caliber and the intense drama of their initial clash. Meanwhile, pro boxer Chris Algeri offered an unexpected perspective on the fight. Six. Yeah. Multiple times in that fight. Hurt him to the body, hurt him to the head. Mm -hmm. Throughout the fight, multiple times. Usyk refused to stay hurt. Yeah. Refused to stay Algeri hurt. Algeri pointed out Fury's ability to land significant blows on Usyk multiple times throughout the match, targeting both his body and head. Despite these moments, Yusik consistently refused to stay down, quickly regaining his composure after each hit. Algeri emphasized Yusik's resilience and determination, noting how he would briefly step back after taking a punch from Fury, but promptly return to the fight with renewed energy. He described Yusik's strategy as a conscious decision to remain aggressive and persistent, constantly pressing the pace and staying in Fury's face throughout the bout. Algeri speculated on when Yusik made this critical decision, suggesting it could have been during training camp, in the locker room, or even while facing off with Fury. Regardless of the timing, Yusik's strategy was clear. Maintain an unyielding pace that Fury couldn't match, aiming to wear him down and inflict damage. In addition to Algeri's insights, Irish boxing trainer Dominic Engel also offered his perspective on the fight and whether Tyson Fury was showing signs of decline. Tyson was still moving, still trying to avoid shots. All right, he was taking the shots. It's not like he was stood on the same spot getting hit with five and six shots on the spot. Angle opened by acknowledging the fight's exhilarating moments, but underscored Fury's evident struggles as it unfolded. He observed that while Fury may have claimed some early rounds, the tide turned significantly once Usyk found his rhythm, landing effective shots with increasing frequency. Angle emphasized Usyk's relentless pressure, which he believed pushed Fury beyond his usual limits. He marveled at Usyk's enduring stamina, despite his older age compared to Fury, and his adeptness at handling larger opponents, factors that visibly fatigued Fury as the fight wore on. Turning to Fury's physical preparedness, Angle speculated that Fury may have overestimated his fitness level, a misconception shattered by the grueling demands of the bout. He suggested that Fury's conditioning might have been insufficient to withstand Usyk's persistent onslaught, particularly given Fury's towering physique and the challenges of maintaining cardiovascular endurance with age. Angle also offered criticism of the corner work during the fight, noting that the presence of multiple voices, including Sugar Hill Stewart, John Fury, and Andy Lee, may have contributed to confusion and disjointed advice. Angle emphasized the crucial need for a clear, singular voice in the corner, especially during pivotal moments. He questioned the effectiveness of the advice given, suggesting that fighters often rely on their instincts in such high-pressure situations. Furthermore, Angle expressed doubts about the credentials of Sugar Hill Stewart and Andy Lee as trainers, wondering if their experience and past success adequately prepared them for a significant bout like Fury vs. Usyk. In closing, Angle highlighted the necessity of Fury being in vastly improved physical condition for any potential rematch. He advocated for a simpler, more strategic game plan, focusing on utilizing Fury's jab to control the tempo and maintaining a dominant position in the ring. Angle believed that with enhanced fitness and a more calculated approach, Fury would have a better chance of emerging victorious against Usyk in a rematch. Meanwhile, Adam Smith offered his own take on the fight, suggesting that the Gypsy King made too many mistakes in the ring. In the fight, um, I thought between four and seven, he won every round there, but uh, for me, Usyk was a worthy winner. Um, early, early rounds, great start, but he was fantastic the way he Smith praised Usyk's performance while acknowledging Fury's potential for a comeback. He started by highlighting the significance of the rematch clause being activated and the anticipation surrounding another showdown between these heavyweight giants. Smith commended Usyk's strategic approach and execution during the fight, particularly noting his strong start and control over the ring. He emphasized Usyk's impressive display in the 8th and 9th rounds, highlighting his endurance and tactical brilliance. Although Smith scored the fight in Usyk's favor by 3-round SS, he recognized that opinions on the outcome might differ, especially given Fury's performance. Smith acknowledged Fury's moments of success, 
particularly in rounds 4 to 7, but criticized him for showboating and failing to effectively utilize his jab early in the fight. Smith believed that Fury's failure to establish his jab allowed Usyk to dominate the early rounds and set the tone for the rest of the match. Looking ahead to a potential rematch, Smith remained hopeful about Fury's ability to adapt and bounce back stronger. Smith underscored Fury's potential to clinch victory by emphasizing the importance of a stronger start and reliance on his jab. He conveyed optimism about Fury's ability to glean valuable lessons from the defeat and potentially reverse the outcome in a rematch. Smith stressed the necessity for Fury to adopt a disciplined approach and rectify the errors made in the initial encounter. Furthermore, Smith paid tribute to the extraordinary trajectory of Usyk's career, ranking him atop his pound-for-pound -pound list. He lauded Usyk's achievements and advocated for greater acknowledgement of Usyk's stellar performance, shifting the focus away from solely scrutinizing Fury's shortcomings. In conclusion, while the boxing world recognizes Usyk's excellence leading to his victory, the question remains, what's your take? Share your thoughts in the comments. That wraps up today's discussion. Remember to like, subscribe, and enable notifications for future updates. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to seeing you next time.